Oh, I think quite often I smile. Uh, the goals we scored, but um, uh-huh. also in the end, the chances we missed. <laughs> um, <laughs> Magoshi had two chances in the end. I don't know if you remember. And uh, Aaron <laughs> Thomas and I said, nice try. The Euro Hockey Daily podcast is brought to you by XPS. Plan, prepare, perform and win with XPS by sidelinesports.com the essential software platform for hockey coaches all over the world. Not just for coaches here at the European Championship, but for all ambitious coaches eager to improve every day. A must-have tool for clubs who want to track the development of their homegrown talents. For more info, check out xps.promo slash hockey. Welcome to the Euro Hockey Daily. Michel Strike with me after the game against Ireland. Uh, it's not been a good game, but tell me about your uh, game here. Uh, yeah, it was uh, after a disappointment against Spain. It mm-hmm. was kind of hard to reset again. Mm-hmm. But I think we started really good. We mm-hmm. had a lot of energy. We had a lot of circle entries and bowling scoring opportunities and um, then one goal against but I think we kept on playing and mm-hmm. we equalized and then like just a small yeah. little mistake at the end cost us a, a, a 2-1 loss so that is all in shit. the details, <laughs> devil is in the details huh? yeah. let's say um, what's the difference of playing in front of a full stadium and yeah this this today an empty stadium does it make a difference for you um, of course if you see your first game against yeah. the Netherlands like it gives an extra boost uh-huh. but still today the ones who are really important for us family friends were there yeah. so I think that didn't make a difference today uh-huh. and also like we're playing for the fifth place so like we need to think about us and we need to think about our, our game and, uh-huh. yeah. and not focus on the public no no um, is there anything extra you think that you need now as a team to make the qualification for Tokyo? Extra training, extra, extra hard work, extra... I don't know. But what uh, needs to change to make the qualification for Tokyo? Because now it means that you will have a, yeah. a, di- a difficult qualification game. Mm-hmm. Uh, f- I th- don't think we need extra training because we're training already for uh, the past months really hard. Uh-huh. Um, I think just to believe that we can do it and we have to start our game with um, we believe we're going to win and dare to play and mm-hmm. I think yeah the mentally part oh it's the attitude it's the, the mental attitude thing and like we said today um, like how we started is just right in their face and attack 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 mm-hmm. and focus on our defensive part of course yeah. and uh, yeah I think we just need to dare to But you still, you still believe in qualification for of Tokyo? Of course, of course. Good. They always matters. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a top player, uh, how do you manage your time between playing for your national team, all the trainings that come with it, there's a club team, uh, a, a busy schedule for you for your club and the, and the club league as well, and then you have studies, you're studying medicine, mm-hmm. not nothing, <laughs> yeah, you need to spend a lot of time on that as well. How do you manage your time? Uh, it's yeah, it's it's of course it's not easy, but you have to plan well and you have to start already now to see what's coming this year. And mm-hmm. of course, with the pro league, it makes you know the schedule harder. Ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not easy, but yeah, planning is, is the solution. And yeah. also look at yourself when it's too much and when you maybe have to drop a thing. Uh-huh. Like then I'm talking about the studies. Uh-huh. Maybe taking. Um, yeah, study points with study yeah. points, maybe taking a bit less. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, club and national hockey, of course, what's coming this year is super important. So, so then you would drop a couple of study points, take a little bit longer for your studies, mm-hmm. and uh, because yeah, at this moment uh, the sport comes first. Yeah, yeah of course, it's, it's going to be a really important year. So okay, well, be- wish you the best of luck, and uh, especially in the, g- the next game. Uh, against Belarus because that will be an important game mm-hmm. to avoid uh, relegation as well. Yeah. So uh, best of luck in that and on the road to Tokyo. Thank you very much.
hit together with the leader by Welton after her uh, semi-final against England, uh, an astonishing uh, 8-0 win. Uh, tell me about the game. Uh, well, I think uh, we started off really well. Uh, and we kept on giving 100% and we kept on pushing and uh, we saw the semi-finals yesterday of course and uh -huh. we knew uh, even though we're 3-0 up, uh, we're not there yet so we keep we have to keep on pushing. Absolutely, what made the difference today? Um, I think the energy we gave and uh, also the little bit of fine-tuning in the circle uh, uh -huh. against Spain, against Belgium, uh, we didn't score enough goals uh -huh. and I think uh, today we did more than enough. Absolutely. But, um, I think the fine-tuning in the circle, the corners, the chances we made uh, was uh, better today. Okay, good. Any uh, preferred opponent for the final? Uh, no, actually not. Uh, if we want to be a re European champion, we should win from everybody. That's it's uh, the classic answer. Uh, yeah, <laughs> cliche. But uh, no, I think um, we're the best if we focus on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, so today we can relax, uh, we can be happy about the win, and tomorrow we'll be focused again. Okay. What made you smile during this game? Oh, I think quite often I smiled, uh, the goals we scored, but um, also in the end, the chances we missed. <laughs> Mago, she had two chances in the end, I don't know if you remember, and uh, I ran towards her and I said, nice try. <laughs> so, also, and that's of course, if, uh, <laughs> if, if you're up by seven or eight at that moment. You can laugh about those things. Yeah, uh, yeah. When it would have been uh, a true, uh, I wouldn't have laughed, but uh, Probably. <laughs> yeah, just the small things in the game. What do you feel is the biggest sacrifice that you have to make in your life to play at this level? Ooh, well it's hard because uh, sacrifice, it's, yeah. um, <laughs> I know why I do it, yeah. so it doesn't really feel like a sacrifice, uh -huh. but I think the quality time you have with friends and family, uh -huh. um, those moments, yeah of course it's sometimes hard, yeah. not hard, but uh, missing out on birthdays and that kind of stuff, yes. um, I think that's the, yeah, the hardest part. Uh -huh. And uh, of course, always training hard, but I enjoy that. So that that's really not to sacrifice. No, I can imagine. It's more uh, the family and friends. It's I can imagine. Um, it's my opinion that we need to make women's hockey a lot stronger in the world, in a, in a lot of different countries. Uh, wh what do you think would be the best way to do that? Is it bringing in more foreign players into the Hofklasse? Is it bringing in more Dutch girls into other competitions? Anything else? What should we do uh, to make others we, better? Yeah, I think the level of competition. Um, we often play uh, levels on high um, uh, games on high levels yeah. and I think uh, we have the strongest competition in the world so uh -huh. of course that helps and yeah maybe bringing in them in the Hofklasse but if you have your own competition you can also train with national team yes so uh, we play competition in Holland but we also train a lot with the national team together yeah. um, and of course I realize it's easier f in Holland cause because it's small distance <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're not, it's, it should be <laughs> yeah it's harder in Australia yeah um, but I think, uh, yeah, that's uh, the benefit we have. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks very much for your time. And, and starting uh, when they're really young, yeah. practicing a lot and enjoying the game. Absolutely, six years old is good yeah. to start playing hockey. Uh, thanks for your time and uh, enjoy the finals. Yes, thank you. With me tonight uh, is uh, Nikki Lawrence. Nikki Lawrence. Nikki Lawrence, yeah. <laughs> uh, who just won, uh, yeah, well, an exciting game against the Spanish. Uh, they uh, came back to two. Uh, you scored, well, typical Dutch style, last minute, uh, the, w <laughs> the winning goal. Um, but before that, did the falling cameraman during your anthem oh my God. break the tension? <gasps> <laughs> no, I think it was so good for us because obviously before a game like that you're really nervous and then in a moment like that you just cannot not laugh. Like it was I too funny <laughs> and I mean obviously after a time you kind of have to like calm yourself down again. But he was standing right in front of us and you can see him smiling, <laughs> him smiling after the hit behind the camera and we were like okay we have to calm down, we have to sing. But I, honestly I couldn't even sing the anthem anymore. <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine. <laughs> But then you still have to play the game. Yeah, sure. But I feel like that's a switch every athlete has. Like yeah. as soon as you, the as, soon, yeah, as soon as the whistle goes, you're like, okay, I'm in the zone. Okay, tell me about the game. Um, well, from the beginning, I felt like we were really good prepared. Like we were waiting for a game like this for so long, and we had a couple of knockout games in the past that we didn't win. Mm -hmm. So it felt like something something was building up to this point. So everybody felt like calm and ready. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we started, I think we had a lot of good ball touches, like that's kind of what you need to get into the game. But then also 
we were a, li a little bit too passive, like a little bit too hesitant, and the Spain could do their build up and we couldn't really yeah. interrupt it. Um, but after the first quarter, I felt like we were finally in the game. We were good, uh, like we had a good defense structure and also going forward and then. And um, the confidence started building. Yeah, confidence starting up and then also with our first, like, I think entrance into the D, we already scored. Like, that's always, that's, that's what you feeling. need in a moment like that. Yeah. Yeah. What made the difference today, you think? Um, the difference, so I feel like with the Pro League and stuff, we have been working together a lot. And then with games like this, where it's like up and downs, your nerves are also like playing a role. We just, like you said already, we build a, like a confidence that we never really had before because we usually don't spend that, mu that much time. Um, so I felt like even when we had some down phases, like we yeah. could really get up. We were like, okay, these are our strengths and um, this is what we can rely on and then we should be fine. Like that's okay. the feeling, we should be fine. Uh, well, you're going to need that in the final. Yeah. I think, what do you need to uh, beat the Dutch? Um, well, you just need to want it. I think it doesn't really depend on who you're playing. Obviously, I feel like this should be the final. Like mm -hmm. I feel like these are the two strongest teams in Europe right now mm -hmm. um, but still it depends so much like on the day it depends on who has a little bit more luck who has a little bit better touch who wants it more so it's just like it's such a small difference like a game can can switch so so quickly is that the strongest wants it more is that the strongest factor you think i feel like in a game like that that's mm -hmm. all you need like if everybody goes 110 percent and the other team just goes 105 then it's always going to be the 110 yep um what would be the bigger prize for you, winning this European Championship or winning the qualification for Tokyo? We it's take both. Yeah, it's <laughs> bo it is both. But what, what, what is making you the most happy? So I, I would say in the moment, like yeah. definitely the European Cup, because uh -huh. like, that's something a lot of, like uh, so many girls of our team haven't even played a final yet, yeah. uh, like a European Cup final. Um, so in that moment, definitely just the championship is the biggest, uh, the biggest prize that we can get. But then if you get home and then you realize you don't really have to play the qualifier, then that make, that we'll, makes it, we'll that be make, pretty we'll happy too. Well yeah. <laughs> eh? um, we seldom see German teams with foreign coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, what has been the added value of a Belgian coach uh, like Xavier Reckinger for your team? Let me think what's Bel like Belgium about him. Or mm. foreign, not, not German. Yeah, like what, foreign. what hasn't been typically German in his approach with your your team. Well, I have to say I haven't really had a lot of coaches, uh -huh. like because I'm still pretty yeah. young and my experience with different coaches are not that broad. Um, but I would say he's like he's a perfectionist, uh -huh. and he depends so much on like the small things. And usually the Germans are more like we have a really good defense and then we'll go forward. That's like how I felt before, and with uh -huh. him it's like we have a good defense still like this is how we do it but this is how we do it exactly right yeah. and then we're going forward like this is our plan this is how we really want to do it and i feel like if i see the belgium men play uh -huh. like i see this is what he teaches us all the time like okay. it's so funny because sometimes they do something we're like oh my god Rick, that's what <laughs> you just taught us um so that's kind of funny he's just really um he always says it in german but it's the wrong word i don't know where yeah. he got it from but it's like <laughs> details in german and it's so funny because we know exactly what it what means. it means but yeah, yeah but it's like his own word for it because it's even more than details in germany yeah. like in german you know what i mean no no absolutely well uh, thanks very much for your insights here and uh, best of luck in the finals uh, against yeah. the dutch you're welcome thank you thank you thanks for listening Join us again tomorrow for a new episode of the Euro Hockey Daily on your Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify or at studiohockey.com. Enjoy your hockey. Bye-bye.